Uh, it's a little different this morning. Uh, you might notice that uh, Danny's not here today. Um, he's out of town. And so we have Bob Heatherton speaking this morning. Uh, if you haven't heard Bob speak before, um, it's a real pleasure to hear him. He is awesome. He's not where he is. But uh, <laughs> hopefully he's still here. It's fun to talk preach. Um, all right. Uh, the only announcement I can think of is we're still collecting for Operation Christmas Child. Um, there are some boxes, I believe, in the back if you need a box. Um, but we are still collecting. And I think we'll be collecting for the next couple of weeks. So just keep that in mind. Um, let's give the Lord a prayer um, as we begin our worship. Uh, dear Jesus, uh, thank you for letting us gather here today, Lord. Uh, Lord, I just pray that this morning we would be able to come and just worship you, Lord, that uh, we would just be free from distractions in this world, Lord, um, that we'd be able to focus on who you are and what you've done for us, Lord. Uh, Lord, I just pray that as Bob speak, uh, preaches this morning, Lord, that uh, your word would speak to our hearts, Lord, um, and that it would uh, revitalize us, Lord, and that we would take um, your word to the people around us, Lord. Lord, uh, there are people in our lives that don't know who you are, Lord, and we just take and share the gospel with the Lord. Lord, I pray that uh, if there's anybody here today that doesn't know you, Lord, uh, this day, they can come to know you, Lord. Lord, I just pray that you would just bless this hour of worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning. It's good to see some faces that we haven't seen inside in a long time. And uh, we're going to be doing Facebook. We say good morning.
sounds funny with your mask. And your...
Thank you, Marcia. Do, does anybody know what that song is? Be thou my vision. Be thou my vision. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's good to be here. You know, when Danny's gone, he can ask anybody to come. There are a lot of people who like to be here. But I want to be here more than anybody. And so I'm thankful, boy, that he allows me to allows me to come and be there and be here. You know, this is kind of polarized time, isn't it? We're edgy, you know. People are tired of wearing masks. People are tired of staying home. People are tired of watching political ads on TV. You know, other things that are going on, you know, we're just we're kind of tired, you know. I'm kind of edgy and grumpy. And so the sermon this morning, I, I prayed about this, and it's kind of, well, the first service, somebody said, well, that was Christianity 101 we preached on this morning. So I guess maybe I hadn't thought about that way, but it's about love one another. That's what we're talking about this morning, is love one another. There's a lack of love. We always need to hear about love. Now, I'm not talking about human love. And I like human love. I like that a lot. But that's, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about divine love. We're talking about agape love. Um, and our text is in 1 John. So I want you to take your Bibles and turn to 1 John. And, and uh, we'll read a few verses. And then you keep those Bibles. We'll be coming back to that. We'll be going to some other places as, as well. Uh, 1 John uh, chapter 4, verse 7 is kind of the text that I'm going to use this morning. And uh, it's about loving one another. This agape love, John tells us, is one of the main signs or marks of a true believer. Matter of fact, he gets kind of straightforward there. You know, say you know everything's good with you and God, and there's no love, he said, you're a liar. <laughs> you know, just, you're a liar if you do that. Well, let's look at this in just a minute. Dear friends, let us love one another. Now, again, it's not human love. Human love's good, but that's not what it is. Use the word agape here. It's a Greek word that, that you won't find much in, in, in Greek literature prior to the time of Christianity. It, it kind of became a very distinct uh, word to describe divine Christian love, a very special kind of love. And that's the word he uses here. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. See, this, this is a special kind of love. Now, you know, when each of us is, is, comes into this world, when we're born, every human being is, is given by God the, cap the capability, the capacity, and the ability to, to love. And human love, I'm not knocking human love. Human love is a good thing. And human love is not shallow. It doesn't have to be like that. It can be very deep. I think the love of a mother for her child, that's human love. Her father, or the spouse. You know, that's, that's, that's human love. Human love is not a bad thing. It can, it can be a, a very sacrificial, a very deep, and is a very, a very, very strong love. But it's 87 octane. Divine agape love is 100 octane or more, okay? It's something different. It's something that comes from God when we're born again. And we'll, we'll talk about that, and I, and, I'll, and I can back up why I said that with, with, uh, with Scripture. Whoever does not love, again, divine love, godly love, does not know God. Because God is love. And that's a whole other subject for another day. 
This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his, his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Oh, this is God. Hey? Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. Now John, when he wrote this letter, you know, John, the John who wrote this letter is the same John who was the disciple, the brother of James, the sons of thunder. Remember that? The same person who wrote the Gospel of John, wrote 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, and who received the Revelation and wrote that. He wrote about 10% of the, of the New Testament, quite a bit. But now he's an old man. And this letter was probably written somewhere in the last quarter of the first century, between 75 and 100. It was in that last quarter of the first century. And then just, just do the math. If Jesus died in the early 30s, and John would have been one of his disciples during those years, we're talking about from the 30s to say at least the 80s for more. Okay? And so John is, is an old man at this time. There's another thing about John. Because he's an old man, he is one of the few people, certainly Christian leaders still alive, who could say, I saw Jesus. You see, most of the people, most of the believers at that time were like you and me. We met Jesus spiritually, we met him in our hearts. But, but we, didn't have, we didn't have, did not have the privilege to literally see him in the flesh, to hear him speak, to, to touch him. So those people were kind of in the same boat we are, even though we're a couple thousand miles, thousand miles, a couple thousand years away, we're kind of in the same boat. But John, not you. And it's kind of interesting, uh, you know, during the 60s, when, when Paul was writing his letters, the threat, one of the main threats to the church was by the Judaizers who, who uh, were pushing legalism. They were saying, you know what? To be a Christian, particularly for the Gentiles, you must have faith in Jesus plus something else, right? Plus obeying the laws of Moses and the traditions and all those regulations. It's Jesus plus these things. And that was a threat that, that Paul and other believers in, in the 60s that, that they had to address and correct. And it was a hard struggle. Well, now John, when he's writing, things have changed. The church now, at this point in time, is predominantly Gentile. Started out predominantly Jewish. Almost all Christians were Jews in the very beginning. But boy, did that change by the end of the century. And most of the believers at that time... Uh, we're from a Gentile background. And so the threats and the problems were, were different. And one of the problems that, that the believers at this time faced was, was Greek philosophy, particularly Gnosticism. Now, Gnosis means knowledge. And, and Gnosticism started during this time and then it really bloomed in the second century. It really became a problem. But, but it was beginning to be a problem right now. And Gnosticism, unlike the Judaizers who said it's Jesus plus something else, the Gnostics would say, well, you know, a true believer is one who has, this, who has received a special secret knowledge. Some kind of special secret knowledge. And, and they are the real believers. Well, that was just as wrong as, just as, wrong as what the Judaizers had said. And so, so uh, John is trying to deal with this. And also the Gnostics, some of their main beliefs were matter is evil, spirit is good. Therefore, if you follow that philosophy, therefore, God who is good, God who is spirit, could not.
not take on human form because human form, matter, is evil. Therefore, they threaten the, the doctrine of the incarnation. And, and so, so John uh, deals with this, even though that's not what I'm going to focus on this morning. But, but look at, uh, at, at 1 John, the first chapter, when he right off the bat, he addresses this challenge to the incarnation. You know, they were saying, Jesus, you know, God never took on human form. Couldn't happen. That which was from the beginning. That's the eternal Christ. That which was from the beginning. Which we have what? We have heard. And he could say, I was there. I heard him speak. Which we have seen with our eyes. Which we have looked at. And John could say, he was one who was still alive. I heard him. I saw him. I saw God who took on human form in the person of Jesus. Which we have looked at and our hands have touched. I touched him. Not many people could say that when John wrote this. Hardly any. Hardly anybody could say that. But John could say it. Don't tell me. There's no incarnation. Don't tell me that it's impossible for God who is spirit and holy to take on human form. I'll tell you, he did. I was there. I saw it happen. The light appeared. We have seen it and testified to it. And we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard. Well, he dealt with another issue. He dealt with this one. But there was another one. And it had to do with love. It had to do with lack of love. And there were believers, or people who claimed to be believers, who said everything's good with being God, but... Can't stand Marshall. And Jason makes me sick. You know, but I'm good with God. You remember Jesus, we talked about going to the temple and, and your offering. Remember that little story? You go to the temple and you remember what? You remember that you have something to give somebody else. And what do you do? Just lay your offering down, go back and make things right, and then come. And, and worship. I use this illustration of a capital T. I like this one. Capital. A capital T. If the vertical represents my relationship to God and the horizontal represents my relationship to others, if my relationship with others is out of kilter, there's no way in the world I can say my relationship with God, right? Is what it ought to be. They are, they're connected. They're connected. Now let's talk about agape love just a minute. Because that's really important. It's very important that we understand that this is not human love. And like I said, I'm not knocking human love. I love human love and I practice it all the time. It's good. I'm not knocking that. But this is about divine love. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, Paul is writing to the church in Galatia about what? The gift of the Spirit. Remember that? The fruit of the Spirit? The fruit of the Spirit. And the very first statement that he makes in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 is, the fruit of the Spirit is agape. That's the Greek word that's used there. The fruit of the Spirit is love. 
It's something that God bestows upon one when they come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. You know, the Bible teaches us, and I believe that when, when a person comes to know Christ, that the Holy Spirit comes to live in the life of that believer. And when he comes to live in the life of that believer, he brings gifts. And the very first one that is listed here is the God they love. And this is the, the divine love of, of which we, we speak. It's interesting, uh, he, he talks about, and this is nothing new, but we find this even going back to the Old Testament talking about love and, and Jesus during his, uh, during his ministry. Um, if you look at uh, Mark chapter 12, one of these years I'm going to start writing it down, but I'm still trying to memorize now as long as I can. See, I think if you keep using your brain, you'll keep it longer. And even this morning, I had, to get, I had to leave the house at 6 o'clock to go to the VA to get a COVID test. And, and while she was checking for COVID, I asked her, just go and check and see how the rest of my brain is doing up there. <laughs> in, in, in Mark chapter 12, verse, uh, verse 28 and following, uh, Jesus is in debate, discussion with some of the teachers of the law. And, and we read here, it says, one of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, noticing that Jesus had given a good answer. He asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? So let's just think about the Ten Commandments. The first four of the Ten Commandments relate to our relationship to God. No idols, don't use his name in vain. You know, the first four relate to our relationship to God. And then beginning with honor your father and your mother, the last six relate to our relationship with other people. You know, the cat and the tea. Okay, so the Ten Commandments kind of covered, they covered the horizontal and the, and the vertical. And here when Jesus answers this question, in, in, in some respects, he kind of summarizes the Ten Commandments. 29. The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Now, you know what? If you love the God, if you love the Lord as one, the one true God, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, that falls right in line with those first four, first four commandments. And then Jesus said, the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. And the statement, love your neighbor as yourself, certainly summarizes the last six. If you love your neighbor as, you sit, as yourself, there's not going to be adultery, right? There's not going to be thievery, coveting, and false witness. You know what I mean? If you love your neighbor, and it, it kind of summarizes um, what they are. Now, you know, we're like jumping all over the Bible here, but it's, it's okay. The Bible's a good thing to use at church. <laughs> now, back to 1 John, talking about the marks of discipleship and of following Jesus. In chapter 2, verse 3, he says, We know that we have come to know him if we do what? If we keep his commands. Do you see the connection between these commands and love God and love others? Do you, do you see the, the see the connection? And then Jesus even went a step uh, further. Look at the Gospel of John. I won't jump around too much more after this, but 
this is good for you. It's good for me. John chapter 13, verse 34. Now this is when Jesus was having the last supper. Okay? John chapter 13, verse 34. A new command I give you. Agape. Love. Well, agape. Well, that's the, agape is the ver a verb. Agape is the noun. Love one another. And then he qualifies. See? He defines and qualifies what he means by this love. This this agape love. Even though human love can be very deep and very strong and very great. He says, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, as I have loved, what did he do? He laid down his life for us. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, Everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. You see, agape love can do things that even the highest human love cannot do. Agape love can uh, love your enemy. Right? Agape love can love your enemy. Agape love can love those who despitefully use you and hate you. Agape love is no strings attached. Agape love is, is unconditional. It says, you know, it doesn't matter who you are or what you do, guess what? I love you. And putting this love in action, it means, you know, I, I, I want the best for you. I want the best for you. I love you enough to tell you the truth. Think about that. I love you enough to tell you the truth. And one of the main truths is without Christ, you're a deep kimchi. Right? Without, without Christ, without Christ, there's no forgiveness of sin. Without Christ, there is no hope of heaven. Now see, a lot of people don't want to hear that. And you make some people mad when you tell them that. There is no other Savior than Jesus. There are not many paths to God. There is only one path to God. And that's Jesus. Jesus said, when you've seen me, what? You've seen the Father. Jesus said, He didn't say, I'm one of the ways. He said, I am the way, the truth, the life. So agape love is, is, is willing to love people so much that you'll, you'll tell them the truth. Agape love means that if they don't love you back, you'll still love them. Agape love means that they treat you bad. And you see, I'll draw this thing to a conclusion here. But I'm real concerned. I'm real concerned about our society right now. It's very polarized. There's a lot of hate, a lot of mistrust. That bothers me. I bet it bothers you. It bothers me. Now, I haven't lived as long as Judy, but in my time on this earth, um, it seems a little worse than what I've observed uh, before. I mean, it's always been there. It's always been there. I know that. But you know something that bothers me even more than all this in our society? In our church. Mm -hmm. yeah. It bothers me. And within the Christian family, within the Christian community, there is distrust and hate. See, I, I love you enough to tell the truth. 
All you got to do is listen to people today and watch them look at Facebook. And some of the things that Christians write is pee poor. And so John, speaking to the, the churches, the number of churches, and, and they were probably the same churches that were in, in Revelation, plus a few more. Friends, dear friends, beloved, love one another. Work on it. Work on it. It takes intention. It's not easy to do, is it? It's not easy. It, it, takes, it takes an intentional effort. To love one another. So anyway, that's uh, Christianity 101 based on what somebody told me earlier. But sometimes we need 101. And so uh, I'm going to do 202 and stop. Okay. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, I just can't think about other people and talk about other people. I've got to think about me. Certainly, Lord, there are many places in my life where agape love <laughs> does not shine very brightly. Lord, show me where I hate, where I have mistrust. Show me where I don't really want the best for somebody else. Show me, Lord, where I get aggravated. Show me where I'm so sensitive and get so uptight about things that don't even matter. They say the wrong song in church. It was the wrong type of song. I couldn't sit in my pew. Somebody was there. You know, somebody got my part in place. Lord, help me to see those crazy, silly things that, that seem to affect my life. And maybe, Lord, there's a few people like me that need some help too. Beloved, dearly friends, Love one another. For by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. Comes a time of decision as God's moving in your life to make a public decision. I'll be right down here. I'll turn off my microphone, you know, so if you say something real bad, nobody will hear it. And I'll just tell a few people. Oh. And I put my mask on. Okay. things you need. 
and, and they're indispensable. You, you, you have to have these and use these. But I said there's one that stands above all the rest. And that is you must love the Lord and you must truly love the people to whom God has sent you. And, uh, and you already know this, but I love this church. I love you. And you know what? I know that you love me. And, and I want to see more of that. Not just for me. I mean, I want to see that. I want to see more of that. This is a loving church. God is blessing. You want to make an announcement? And Beth's not here, so she's not going to say anything. So, <laughs> so uh, I'll pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, go with us now. And uh, Holy Spirit, Lord, maybe we may just get out of the parking lot and somebody aggravate us. Help us to be kind and considerate. Help us to let the agape love of Christ flow through us to any and all. We pray in Jesus' name.